Oh, how I miss it boy. <laughs> What's up everybody? After last week in Aling Sosings, I am not passing up another opportunity on Cat and Daddias that have come highly recommended to me. So I've made my way over to Pasig. Long time ago, somebody recommended this place to me. And this place right back behind me here is Karoo's Eatery. Let's go check this out. Karoo's Eatery. Uh, you guys, I actually had one of my viewers recommend this place to me like a year ago. I was trying to arrange to get here, I never did, but like I said, after all the associates last week, I, I don't want to miss out on another Kevin Petty again. So I got here as quickly as I could. I cannot get all of the food that I have here in front of me in shot. Uh, just to kind of give you a quick rundown, I'll introduce them to you more as I start to eat them all. But I've got some dinner going here. I haven't had it since I've been back in the Philippines. You guys know it's one of my favorite dishes. First thing you know I'm going for is this. I don't think that puto is. Hey, bud, you wouldn't have that puto, would you? Puto? Yeah. Do you guys have any? No puto? Oh well, no puto. We're going to do it with rice. So this is their dinner one. And that's the first thing we're gonna go for. Just gonna throw a little bit on the rice here. All right, here we go. So, if you've never been to the Philippines before, you have no idea what dinaguan is. Uh, it's a blood stew. There's gonna be a bunch of dinners that are fried down the side of here, and they actually use the pork blood to cook it. It's one of my favorite Filipino dishes. I love this more than anything else in the world. Yeah. And it's awesome. I know dinner guan sounds bizarre. Blood, you would think, being cooked down like that would have a very heavy, irony flavor to it. It doesn't. Right, there's pork meat, there's pork innards inside of here. They get some little chewy bits that are inside of it. The flavor of it is beautiful, it's slow stewed, it's awesome. <laughs> you do get a heavy flavor of the liver in there, dinner guan. Oh, how I've missed dinner going. Huh? <laughs> Let's move on to another dish here. Um, what do I want to do? I've already got a little sauce mixed up here. Calamansi soy sauce, slight little bit of vinegar, some chilies, and then they also brought me out. Like, look at this chunk, this vinegar. The darker vinegar here. I'm wondering if that's uh, northern. We can do a direct comparison to Ali and Sosin's Liampo last week. I also have their Liampo. That's him messaging me. I just messaged him. I'm worried they're gonna run out of food because the place is starting to pack up. So I gotta get some food ordered for her. This is their liempa, but I'm just going into the calamansi, soy sauce, vinegar, chili mixture here. A little ripples, it's still inside. Oh, it's good. If there's anything, if there's a flavor, it's fantastic. Once again, got a beautiful fat to meat ratio on it. Not completely bone free though. I'm gonna try this with just his vinegar. Oh, the vinegar is nice. Really tart. Okay, oh, yeah, this dish here. This is chicken a la cubana. I've never had this before. Um, I, I really don't know. There's the little fried bananas that they top all over the top here. Uh, it's chicken, there's peas, there's carrots in here. How it's all cooked down, I really have no idea. Let's go straight this, straight in the mouth. <laughs> I really want to know what they are cooking all that down with, because there's a sweet savoriness to it. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever had it. I want to get a little bit of that fried banana with it as well. That is very good. With Filipino food, once you get beyond your typical tree foods, 
and things like that, a lot of dishes very much become comfort meals. Like food that your grandmother would make for you. That's what I feel about caricare, that's what I feel about calderetta, which I have a calderetta here. Um, this just reminds me of that. Menudo, another one. It's, it's just a comfort food. Mm. A little fried banana and a beautiful touch to it. A little caramelized sweetness behind it. Next one we got here. This is about the end of it. There wasn't a whole lot of it left up there. But this is Papa Ethan. If you don't know what Papa Ethan is, uh, Papa Ethan is a soup that's made with the innards and the bile from the pig. The bile is what's going to give it the sourness that's from it. So, like, as you can see here, mix it around a little bit. It's all innards that are inside of it. This is your straight Papa Ethan. I'm going to tell him right now. That is the most better Papa Ethan I've had to date. And they normally say that's exactly how it's supposed to be. I've never had it where it's been overly bitter. This has got bitterness to it. So I'm just going to throw a little bit of this on the rice here. Let the ambulance go up. Okay, here we go. Papa Ethan, a little bit of rice, get all the broth and everything mixed in here. Alright, awesome. The innards don't overwhelm the flavor of everything else. It's there, you notice it. But it's not an overwhelming from the innards. You're just getting this beautiful broth. It's a bit sour. Not a bit sour. It's quite bitter. Like, that is by far the most bitter one I've ever had. And like I said, <clears throat> every time I've had Papa Ethan, I've always read that it is supposed to be extremely bitter. I've never had it where that's the case. That is nothing better. Right. Ooh, I'm trying to pace myself out a little bit here. I've already got a full cup of rice. I still have two other dishes to try with the rice. So I want to make sure that I have rice for that. Let's take a quick breather real quick. I want to go after this. This is oak white. Um, these are, it's a softer oak white than I've ever had before. Normally they're extremely crisp and crunchy, but what it is, it's glutinous rice. It's basically fried down and there's tons of little tiny shrimp. Inside of this, this looks like it's seasoned quite well. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful shrimpy flavor immediately. And that saltiness is kind of what's addicting about them. I've never had these where they're not super crunchy. Three more dishes to get through still. Go after these snails. Uh, so these snails, uh, they're done in a coconut milk, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's calabaza, which is a squash in here. Then some green beans. Let's check out the calabaza and the green beans. Get it dipped in the dish. Okay. Right. This poor little guy has already broke over here. Okay. I'm dip right into that coconut milk. Yeah. Snails are great. There's just not a whole lot to them, and they're just chewy, but they are delicious. And they're not spicy at all, uh, but they're snails, and snails are fantastic. They're a lot of work for very little reward, but they taste great. Sometimes you got to fight with trying to get them out. There we go. The sauce and everything that they're cooked in is delicious. Now, I don't know what the proper Filipino name for this would be, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll have to ask the guy when he comes back around here, when I see him again. Now you can see by the amount of rice I have left, why I was so stressed out there. So here we go, we're going menudo here. Uh, one thing I can say about this eatery slash carindaria, uh, they go heavy with the pork dishes, and I like that. But in this uh, menudo, there's definitely a lot of liver in here. It should be. Here we go. 
It's great flavor. It's cooked down in a tomato sauce. There's carrots, potatoes, peas. Uh, what else is in on the noodle? I don't know. It's just, once again, it's just one of those meals. Uh, in Filipino cuisine, that uh, just reminds you of comfort food. Uh, you need to be able to, like, innards to eat something like this. But I'm a fan of innards, so it works perfectly for me. The flavor of it is fantastic. Oh, beautiful. Last one we're going to try and get into here. This is their pork calderera. Now, as you guys have seen, I've eaten calderera a million times. I don't recall ever having a pork calderera. Good piece of the pork roll over there. Get some of that beautiful tomato sauce. Get some rice. Pretty looking at it. I didn't know how they're cooking their calderera. The flavor of this. Um, I don't really know how to describe it to you. This reminds me of a dish, uh, most of you guys know, I lived for more than 16 years in the Bahamas. This reminds me of a dish that we had back there that we just called stewed fish. The sauces of it taste exactly like that. The sauce on this is unbelievably good. Uh, I'm talking. The pork just falls off the bone. Fantastic. Oh, but okay. Uh, that's it. I've ordered a couple of things to take home, so Emma has some food as well. Uh, so I'm taking a chicken calderera and a rice home to her. So in total, I've ordered 11 dishes here. Total bill for everything ended up just over a thousand pesos. Still very affordable. Is it cheapest you're gonna find? No, but it's also not far from being most expensive. All things being relative, it's still very affordable. That way, once again, 11 dishes in total there for a thousand pesos. Less than a hundred pesos a dish. You really can't complain about it. So just going forward here, I just want to announce to you guys, I have a merch line that's coming out. I'll be releasing and launching more information about that coming soon. But that's it for this video right here. I'm gonna wrap this up. You guys be sure to tune in next week. See what else you can up to.